it's finally over. The 2.5 week long season end review is done and Ten Hag is staying. And that's the right decision. Once Tushi was out of the options to be chosen as the next manager, I think it was pretty obvious that Ten Hag was gonna stay. But before we talk about Ten Hag, let me go on a small little rant about all of the options being considered. First of all, Tushil. This guy, if their posts are to be believed, said that he wanted to reintegrate Sancho into the club. Right? And for that reason alone, I would have been against Tushil. Whichever club Tushil has ever gone, whether it's Dortmund, PSG, Chelsea, now even Bayern, he has broken down all relationships within a year or two. That's how bad he is. And if that's not enough, Tuchel bought Eric Dyer at Bayern. Like, can you imagine Eric Dyer was not even good enough for Spurs. And yet Tuchel thought that he would be good for Bayern. Tuchel would have never worked at United and I'm so glad that he was not chosen. Now, moving on, people say that Ten Hag doesn't have personality, that he's boring in interviews. And yet people wanted Potter. Like, have you seen Potter? When Potter joined Chelsea, right, he got the fresh haircut, he was wearing a suit. Then within six months, he got deep, dark circle, just like me. And he aged about 10 years in six months. Potter was a boring guy at Chelsea. Like, he couldn't handle the pressure there. He couldn't handle the pressure at Chelsea and all the egos in that dressing room. And yet he wanted to handle Manchester United, who's probably like 100 times worse. It was never going to work out. And then comes Mr. Gareth Southgate, the Mr. Nice guy. People say that he has rebuilt the English squad, that he works very well with the youth, you know, integrating Saka, Rashford, Foden, Rice, all of these players. And then what? What has he done at England? He has been there for like about seven years, seven and a half years, and he has done nothing there. With arguably one of the best squads in the whole world. And yet, whenever England has come up against a good opponent, right, like a tough actual opponent, they have always crashed out. So a manager who couldn't handle the golden squad to win anything wants to come to United with probably one of our worst squads, not worst squad, but like a very mixed squad, handle the total toxicity, handle the rebuild, and handle the pressure. Gareth Southgate being linked to United was even more crazy than McKenna being linked to United. Because at least McKenna has a history with his United. But Southgate, crazy. And lastly, Roberto De Zobi, right? People say that United finished 8th and they are a disgrace. What about Brighton? They finished 11th for all of his wonderful play style. You know, the so-called golden football. What happened? 11th? I thought injuries don't matter. Why did he finish 11th? And if that's not enough, people say that Ten Hag, Ten Hag's background, that he's from Ajax, that it was it's basically a farmer's league. And that's why Ten Hag is a bad coach. Have you looked at Deserby's CV? He comes from the Ukrainian league. If people are bad mouthing Ajax and Netherlands, who have like a very rich history in Europe, what would they say about Deserby? So it's like none of the options were ever good enough to replace Ten Hag. And I'm so glad that in yours, even though they might not be fully willing for it, that they have actually decided to back Ten Hag. If you have liked my video so far, then I would really appreciate if you can click on the like and subscribe button below to be a part of the community and to be notified of future uploads. I'm not saying that Ten Hag is without any fault. Like, yes, it's obvious he has made a ton of mistakes this season, right? Whether it's his formations, whether it's his uh, preferences for playing Anthony over Ahmed or, you know, Pelestri, or whether his, it's stubbornness with his in-game management. You know, like substituting the wrong players at the wrong time and tactically being outclassed by championship teams. Like, yes, he was bad this season, but he showed his improvement towards the end of the season. He gave up on his stubbornness. He implemented new tactics and they worked. Ten Hag is a kind of manager, like any decent manager, he would learn from his mistakes. Like, he would see that we have just gone through the worst ever season and he would do things differently in the new season. Like, that's an obvious thing. That's not up to debate. And people shouldn't also forget about the fact that in his first ever season, we had the most clean sheets in the Premier League and we had one of the best defences in all of Europe. We went from that to having one of our worst ever season defensively. We had the most defeats, we had the most goals conceded. We also were one of the worst teams when it comes to conceding goals. Can you not see how bad of an anomaly that is? Like how big of a difference that is from one season to the immediately next season, like that's abnormal. I really do think that pundits and you know journalists are downplaying how bad the injuries are. 
like I already said, it's not the all down to the injuries, but they were a big factor. And in the this season, the upcoming season, I really think Ten Hag will do a much much better job than any of these people who are expecting. Now let's talk about the actual news, right? Ten Hag is staying in your office backing in, and people are reporting that it's due to the FA Cup final win and the fans' belief in Ten Hag. That were the two major factors in keeping Ten Hag. Not the only factors, but like two of the major factors. And not only this, there are reports that they are handing him a new contract. They are negotiating for it. What this basically means that it's not guaranteeing his job. You know, like if he performs badly till Christmas or in the new season, he will get sacked. This new contract isn't guaranteeing him. It's basically the fact that when Ten Hag joined United, it was in his contract that he would have a certain amount of power when deciding transfers. You know, like he will have a say in every transfer whether. They want to sign, they want to sell, or like who to scout, who to buy. I think this negotiation is basically taking that power away, like majority of the power, not all of the power, but majority of the power away of transfers, and transforming Ten Hag from a manager to more of a head coach, you know. And basically, in this summer window, since uh, Ashworth is still doing his drama with Newcastle. It will be Jason Wilcox and Matt Hargreaves who will be handling the transfers because Berada joins from 13th July or something, 12th July, so like another month. So until then, Wilcox and Hargreaves will be handling all of the transfer business. And now we will finally see some transfer activity from Manchester United. You know, finally we will have some actual links because we have already missed out on Adrobio, who I think would have been a really good option as a backup. Because he was free and young. Moving on, I think some of the transfers are gonna be predictable, right? Sancho is leaving, definitely leaving. Like even Dortmund don't want to buy him for just 40 million. That's how crazy it is. Even Dortmund don't want to pay that much money. Then I think Greenwood is leaving. There are already links to Greenwood going to Juventus. I think Greenwood going to Juventus might open the doors for Bremer joining United. So that's one of the transfers. Then Todibo is probably gonna join. I think that's like 90% nailed on to be done. And I think Yusuf Papana from Monaco, the CDM, is gonna be one of the transfers to be done because he's a lot cheaper than other defensive targets, defensive midfielder targets. Jao Neves is probably I would really want to see to join United, but his price tag is crazy, 120 million euros. So let me know in the comments down below who do you think United are gonna buy first in the transfer window? And so yeah, overall I think it's a really positive news. I have been Ten Hag in for like all the season. I've been saying that if he doesn't change his way, he will get fired and he did change his ways and that kept him in the job. So I'm, I'm actually happy that Ten Hag is the one who's going to carry us into the new season because he knows what part of the squad to be cut out and who to replace it with. Let me also know whether you wanted Ten Hag to stay and whether you're happy with this news or not. And now that we are actually going to start the transfer business, you can watch my last video where I discussed about every transfer rumor linked to United. And I also compared the stats. You can click on this link right here to watch that video. And I will see you all again in my next video. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.